It's uh, always exciting for me to see so many of you who are inspired to take action and, you know, just do amazing things. And, and I think it's, uh, it's very, very, very exciting to be leading this group of you guys understanding um, the magnetic mind process and understanding how to really manifest and create that is that which you want, which is, uh, which is super exciting and I'm very passionate about it. And, and so I wanted to start off the year and just say, you know, here we are. It's going to be a, it's going to be a big year, but the truth is, is that you already know how your year is going to go, don't you? And that's because your year is going to be a direct reflection of your internal uh, mind, your internal being. And that's, uh, and that's a really interesting thing for us to think about, isn't it? And so I want to ask you, you know, I know I'm just starting getting straight into it, but I want to ask you, how do you feel about your year? and about what's to come because the year that's about to come is going to directly reflect what you what you're having inside and what you truly believe because the truth is is everything's a placebo and the way that you believe it the way that you feel it the way that you experience it is what is going to manifest is what is going to uh to create. So if you're feeling abundant right now, awesome. If you're feeling freedom right now, awesome. If you're feeling passionate and excited, that's awesome. Because getting there first is is so crucial, isn't it? Is to to get to find it in you first because if you don't find it in you, you won't find it anywhere else, will you? And that's the big thing we have to understand here. But then there's a second thing that I want to make sure we all get is that you still need to take action. You know, you still need to take action. We're not even need. You desire to take action because when the feeling is in the right place, the action is the easy part. The action is you, you are it, you're doing it, you're being it because on this, on this plane, on this level, you know, we're, we're here to experience things, you know, we're here to experience uh, what it is we desire to create and, we're here to do that. And so it's, it's very, very exciting. And so I'm excited for all of you. And, and I know, and you all should know that your year is going to be the reflection of you. And that's a great thing. Your business will be a reflection of you. Your team will be a reflection of you. The money in your bank account will be a reflection of you. But the truth is, is it takes a little bit for that re reflection to show up. And so you've got to do the work. You've got to plant the seed. You've got to water the seed, fertilize the seed, give it sunlight. You can make sure there's no weeds growing around it. You need to do some things. And in that belief, in that patience, in that lag, in that opening, that's what happens when it then starts to manifest and come through. And it's a, it's a great thing to understand that you do the work now, it's already done but then there's still work to do. Remember, there's nothing to do but action to take. And so I'm, I'm excited to, to keep bridging this, this gap for you into, you know, pure manifestation, into instant creation, into exactly what you want. So very excited to be here. I want to introduce a lot more play into how you're creating um, in 2018, 2019 compared to 2018. I really want to bring in a lot more play, a lot more fun, a lot more joy, because even when it comes to doing this work, some of us are taking it too seriously. And it's time to relax into the fact that we know what we're doing and we know how to get results. We know how to do it. And so it's, it's a very fun and exciting time. And there's, uh, there's a really nice balance that, that you must have is that sometimes, you know, there's things to change and things to heal and things to do. Sometimes you've just got to get out there and do it. Who's with me? Sometimes you've just got to get out there and do it. I, I had an interesting conversation um, recently with somebody about doubt. And they said to me, oh, Chris, I need to do a healing because I feel doubtful. I said, you don't need to do a healing around being doubtful. Being doubtful is a true feeling. Being doubtful means I haven't done this before and I need to go and do it. I'm a bit doubtful. Yeah, sure. Of course you need, of course. Yeah. 
Of course, you're feeling doubtful. And so I, I want to remind you, one of my intentions today is I want to remind you that not everything needs a healing. Not everything needs to be fixed because sometimes in the nature of thinking that you need to be fixed, you're reinforcing the fact that you're not there. Sometimes in the nature of seeking a healing, you're reinforcing a feeling that you're not already there instead of realizing that billionaires feel, feel doubt. Billionaires feel insecure at times. And that's okay. It's part of the experience. Does that make sense? So it's not, it, it's, it's for me to say to you, you know, it's beautiful and fun. We get to be able to clear and heal and do things. But we don't always have to reach for it. Do you follow me on that? We don't always have to reach for it because sometimes it can just be reinforcing the fact that we're not what we, we think we are. And so it's, it's important to remember that. It's really important to remember that, that there's a masculine and a feminine principle when you're creating. And obviously the masculine principle says, you know, go out there and do it. And the feminine principle says, well, let's heal, let's, let's care, let's nurture, let's, let's get things out of the way. And you, 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 you'd be wise to be in the middle, being able to do the healing, to do the self work, to do those things, to be in the right vibration and at times just to go, Hey, I just got to do it uh, in spite of maybe not feeling totally, ex you know, totally perfect about it. And, and I hope that that makes sense. They are both very equally important. And I've noticed, um, I've noticed that sometimes we can get ourselves skewed one way or the other and uh, neither of it that's beneficial. And, the one thing we have to remember right now is that we are 100% swimming in a sea of limitless potentials and possibilities. And what we have to do is choose which limitless potential and possibility we're deciding to have and then take action in alignment with that way of being. Because if we're not taking action in the alignment with that way of being, what signal are we sending to ourselves? that we don't really believe it, you see? There's this final piece of truly believing and owning it, and that is doing it. You know, I was talking to another person over the break who's, you know, I'm in abundance, I'm in so much, I'm in, I'm in abundance, I've got so much money, I've got so much money. Oh yeah, Chris, but I, I can't spend money on that thing because I, I've, uh, you know, I've got rules and my rules say, uh, that I have to have this much in my savings account. And I was like, oh, well, I love rules. However, wouldn't you like to do this thing? We're talking about a holiday. I was like, wouldn't you love to go and do this thing? Yeah, yeah, I would. I'd really love it. It'd be so good. All right, well, why aren't we going to do it? Let's do it. Oh, no, no, no. Like, I've got these rules. And so what's interesting is, is the, I said, I said, hey, do you think that that action is in alignment with your feeling of abundance? Yeah, it is. They said, yeah, it is. I said, well, I don't think it is. What do you believe about money? Oh, money's easy. Money's going to come back to me. Money's this, money's that. Well, spend it then. Spend it then if it's going to come back. Use it if it's going to come back, if you're so in abundance. And so she did. And then the next week, she made twice as much money as she thought possible. And, and she made twice as much money as she thought possible. Why? Because she wasn't just saying, I'm in abundance, but half holding back. She went, I am. She went free flowing. She went full in. She went for it. You see, she goes, you know what? No. Yeah. Okay. I do want that. And she opened up that free flowing. So, you know, no, I do believe in this. And then it came back. And it's such an interesting thing that I wanted to bring up is that, you know, you've, sometimes you've got to align the action, right? You know, sometimes you go say, yeah, I believe I'm a speaker. I'm changing the world. I believe I'm this. I believe I'm that. Well, freaking prove it, you know, do it. And so it's, it's exciting for me to say that, you know, this year, I really am going to be talking into a lot, this balance between the healing, getting in the right feeling, but then also the action that needs to be taken. You see, there is an action in order for some, in order for you to manifest the right relationship, you need to take some actions to put you in the, the right space. And, and it's really these, these to create anything, in this universe, you need a masculine and a feminine. Feminine, you need it. Think about it. From the the smallest tree that you see to every human being, 
to everything that you you see in this world that's created. There's times where you need to plant the seed, take the action and do the masculine. You'd have to go for it. And there's times where you need to sit back, receive what's being given to you and make it bigger. Right? Can I say any more on the topic? There's times for both of those. And I'll share a learning I had to have last year. I had to learn the feminine in business. I was so busy planting another seed, taking the action, planting another seed, taking the action, pushing, taking, pushing, taking. As soon as I stood back and went, you know what, I'm going to be happy to receive some of this, and I actually gave it space, guess what? The team, the, the structures, the culture, the products, everything started to re-give back to me. And it was such a blessing <clears throat> when it did. It was such a blessing. And so it's a, it's a very interesting thing to start thinking about. So I'm excited for um, I'm excited for this year. It is it is huge. It is huge. There's actually a place in business where the feminine needs to come in, and I actually think it goes one then the other, one then the other, one then the other. It's really interesting. So you got to go masculine for a certain bit, then receive it for a bit, then you got to go masculine, feminine. And I think it's a really interesting shift that we need to realize. It's really good, really good. It goes along the fast track as well goes along the fast track. Seek is very feminine, start is masculine, promote is very feminine, build is masculine. It's very, very cool. So guys, I'm here to talk to you today about inner conflicts. Who feels as though they might have a inner conflict that is, is stopping them achieve what they desire? I would refer to this uh, on a basic level as cognitive dissonance where we have two competing beliefs inside one human being. Who could give me an example of a competing belief where we have two beliefs and because they're both there, it, it freezes us in knowing what it is that we believe. So on one hand, we might believe that money is good. And then on the other hand, we believe that everyone that's had money has always ripped us off, right? Can you see how money, I really want lots of money, but everyone's had money has been a bad person. Yeah, uh, Maureen says, wanting to meet someone, but not wanting to be hurt at the same time. Like I want to meet people, but, but, but I want to fall in love, but, fall in the, but people are in love, but that also means getting hurt. So I'm not willing to risk this to have this. Competing beliefs, I like it. Good one, good one. Um, I want to start a business, but I believe that business is risky. Right, I wanna I wanna sign up more clients, but I believe that there's not many clients to go around. You see, these these conflicting arguments inside of our head can cause a civil war. They can cause a civil war, and they they allow you to not move anywhere. Right, wanting to be successful, but also wanting to be safe. Yeah. And so we can, we can end up with civil wars going on inside our head where we just don't move and we do nothing, right? I want to speak, but I'm, I'm fearful of, of what people think of me. Yeah, yeah. And so there's, there's usually, these are usually very subtle that we have these, these cognitive beliefs, cognitive dissonance, where, where we literally have a belief about something that we desire, but then there's like a, a little villain that's there that we actually also believe that stops it. You know, like you want to make lots of money, but salespeople are bad, right? And you're a solopreneur that has to sell. And that's really interesting. It's really interesting that something like that could, could possibly be, uh, a conflict inside of you that, that disallows you manifesting because you're sitting there, you're trying to manifest. And here's the truth. If you're trying to plant two different seeds at the same time, you can't be watering them and fertilizing two different things. You can't get two going. So sometimes we've even got two businesses. How else can we have in a conflict? Oh, I want to be a speaker. Oh, I also want to have an e-commerce business. Well, I'm confident. What? What do you mean? What? How? What? How does that work? Oh, uh, you know, I want. I want to be in this relationship. I want to be single and travel the world. I don't want that. And so, inner conflict sometimes can cause us to seem motivated and really busy, 
But because of the inner conflict, we move one way with one, then we stop and move one way with the other. And so instead of it being an oscillating pattern, it looks more like a seesaw. This one gets a bit of momentum, just enough to get this one a bit of momentum. But we stay right there in the middle. Who's with me? Anyone seen this in themselves? I'll tell you a little bit about, about it with me. Is I wanted to grow a successful business, but I never wanted to have a job. I wanted to grow a successful business, but I was unwilling to ever have a job. So you tell me about somebody who has a belief that having a job is bad and failure, but they want to grow a successful business. Tell me how that would really, really hurt them. What do you guys think? How would that really hurt someone? They want it. They, they want to grow a successful business, but they will never allow themselves to have a, have a job. Maureen says structure and consistency. Yeah. Yep. Won't do what's necessary. Right. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I had a phobia of sitting down and doing any sort of work. You know, like you tell, you know, anything that looked or smelt like work or structure or, or forms or anything that, that wasn't, that, that looked like any sort of work that I'd done, anything that I'd done as a job, I would just throw other people to do it. I'd pay others to do it. I'd do whatever it is instead of just doing it sometimes. And because of that inner conflict, it caused me a lot of pain. But it was like this little shadow conflict. I didn't really know it was there until I actually looked at it and went, you know what? Like I could have a job. And about three years ago, I did this process and I'm going to be talking you through it. And I did this process and I went, you know what? I could actually have a job. I could. But it just had to be something I love doing. And as soon as I started to realize and let go of that conflict of how bad it was to have a job, it, everything changed and it was a big one for me. And, and it's, it's interesting um, when you have these conflicts and I've had many conflicts in my business career, am I going to grow a big business or am I just going to stay a small freedom business? That was a conflict for as long as I can remember. And so conflicts are interesting because we see ourselves as one personality, but how many personalities are we really? How many personalities are we really? Let's think about this because every personality actually has its own priorities. So how many personalities are we really? Let's think about this. If you know yourself intimately, obviously you do, you know others intimately, they have a grumpy, self don't they don't they have a grumpy personality don't they have an achievement personality don't they have a lazy personality don't they have a funny personality don't we have all, a, a, a part of us that 100 percent believes and then another part of us that kind of doesn't don't we have these different personalities inside one human being isn't it interesting and isn't it true and what if you had a personality that was quite strong in you that was like a self-doubter? And then what if you had another personality that was a true believer? They wouldn't really get along and they would cause a lot of conflict. So we're going to do a fun exercise. You guys ready to do it? You guys ready to do it? Because what we want to do is we want to bring all of these together. It's going to be a fun meditation so I'm going to start off by asking a, a, a few a few questions um, <laughs> Christine says that's why there's all those people in the football stand yeah <laughs> all right so here's my first question is what is something that you truly desire what is something that you truly desire to manifest? Doesn't have to be big. Just something you'd like, something that would be nice. What is that? What is something you would like to desire that there's, there's no reason why you have to have it, you just want it? And what is something that there's no good reason you don't already have it? Go on, type it in, let me know. What is 
something you just desire. Nice. Sailing on the Great Barrier Reef. Sounds like a good idea to me. Well done. A new car. Beautiful. Renovating the house. Like it. More coaching clients. Nice. $100,000 passive income. Like it. <laughs> like it, like it, like it. Hey, Patricia, just saw you jumped on. Good timing. Good timing as always. Your timing is impeccable. What is something we're just starting jumping into a process? So the question is, is we're, we're focusing on um, conflicts and in, inner conflicts that stop us inside. The first question to set this up is what is something that you desire just because you desire it? What is something that you just would like to have? And this will just type that in or write it down. Being interviewed on a radio station, brand new car. Nice. So the second question is compared to that, where are you now? I don't have the car. I'm not planning to go. I haven't got my, the, the, the sailing trip booked. I, I'm this, I'm that. It's just don't have it on my way. Cool. Just wherever you are, whatever you're trying to manifest, what's the current reality compared to that? So just have I, you know, I haven't booked it or, you know, I've only got this much or I haven't been on a radio station. Just, just type in what the current reality is so that we can kind of see the tension here. It's super important for the tension to be seen. It's tension seeks release. So just, just set those up, type them on in. Nice. Got a few coaching clients. Nice. You're at $30,000. You like to be at $100,000. It's a good idea, Christine. It's no problem at all. Cool. Cool. So we're going to do a quick, um, we're going to, we're going to, yeah, Europe for my 40th and I haven't booked it yet. Cool. So we're going to do a quick um, close eyes exercise to, to, to figure out the obvious next step. And it's always interesting. It doesn't matter what we work on. We're always working on everything. So we're going to close our eyes. We're going to go, hey, Jane, I just saw that you just jumped on. Did you get the questions? Because it's a good, it's good timing. Good timing. We're talking about conflicted parts, inner conflicts. And we're about to do a process in a second. Not now. We're still setting it up. We were discussing about how inner conflicts can stop us more than anything. Especially when we have part of us that has a, a cognitive dissonance where we think, I'd like to make lots of money, but people who make money um, aren't nice. So... What we need to do is the first step is I asked, you know, what is something that you just like to manifest? What is something you just like to create in your life? And everyone's typed in something they just like to create just because they'd like it. $100,000 more money. We've got a few people who want to go on some holidays, nice new cars, just some stuff we want to manifest. That's the first question. The second question is compared to that, where are you now? Don't have the money at 30 grand. I want a new car. Don't have the car want more clients, got a few clients. And we just, we set up and it's important to do this setup whenever you're manifesting. This is what I want and this is where I am in current reality because your brain doesn't like tension. Your brain doesn't like to not be where it's supposed to be. So it's going to find it out. We're going to do that in, right now. So in a second, we're going to do closed eyes exercise. We're going to go to the future that we want to manifest, we're going to look back at where we were and we're going to find the obvious next step. Okay. It's really actually quite powerful. So if you're all ready, let's do this little quick exercise before we dive into the big, um, the big change work. And let's just close our eyes for a second and let's just step forward into time. Just take a couple uh, deep breaths and just relax for a second.
and just just imagine what it would be like if you had manifested what you just wrote down. Just close your eyes and just imagine what it'd be like. Step into that picture. Breathe in through your nose and just have a nice big deep breath and experience what it's like to be at that point. Notice how it feels. And now from here, I want you to look back to the current place that you're in compared to this. And I want you just to ask yourself, what was the obvious next step that I had to take? What was the obvious thing that I had to do in order to get from there to here? And when you've got it, you can open your eyes and type in what the obvious next step is. To believe in myself more. Thank you. To plan some dates. Nice one. Go car shopping. Nice one. Check out the options, get planning. Get on more podcasts, beautiful. Here's what's interesting. We always know the next action step. And so you actually know the next action step. You know what is that you need to do next. And you want to manifest these things. And so let's, let's look at it. Some of you go, oh, but Chris, I just said something silly. No, you didn't. You said something you want to manifest. Don't limit yourself. You want to manifest. It's all right to have things that you want. It's all right. It's all right to make sure that you're going to get it done. It's perfect. It's beautiful. It's what you want to do. So, when we think about that action, I've got some questions for you. What are your reservations about taking this action? Go. Tell me, when you think about this action that you just wrote down, like, what are your reservations? Like, why are you like, well, why, haven't, why are you reserved? Why are you holding yourself back from doing that? What are your reservations? Type them in. Scared of success. Your reservations because you don't know what it's going to be like. If you actually just believed. Hmm. My reservation is it wasn't a thing before now. So, so, so that doesn't really make sense. What are your reservations about this action step? Are there any reservations? Nice one. My confidence, I've got a resume, I won't have the money to enjoy it. Mm. Mm. That's good. I have to get used to the idea. Mm. Okay. All information is good information, Christine, and it's gonna, it's, it's always good. The way we do anything is the way we do everything. Nice. What are, our res what are your reservations? Here's the next question. What judgments have I made that stop me from this action? Are there any judgments? Who am I judging? How am I judging myself? How am I judging other people? What are the judgments I've made about this action? 
There you go, I can't afford it. Awesome. Good judgment. It's selfish. Good judgment. Beautiful. What judgments have you made? It won't work. How have you judged yourself? I don't have the ability to do that. I can't justify it. I'm, it's, I'm not worthy of that. Yeah, how have you judged it? Guilt. What will others think? Mm. Interesting, isn't it? That even a simple manifestation, we know the answer and we, we've got lots of stuff in our way. What other judgments are there? Next one. What in a conflict have I experienced? What in a conflict have I just experienced? What in a conflict do I experience about this? What in a conflict do I experience about this? What's the conflict? I'm conflicted because one part of me thinks this and one part of me thinks this. Write it as a conflict. So you wrote, I don't deserve to have a good time. Well, part of you does believe that you deserve to have a good time. You see that? There's a conflict. Please write in the conflict. Today's theme is conflicts. One part thinks I can just do it. Other part thinks I can't. I deserve it with all the work I do versus circumstances that I can't control. Other part thinks I should not have a good time. At times I believe in myself and then at other times I don't. It's nice. It's fine. It's these conflicts are healthy. We, uh, we do well to ensure that we look at all sides of things. Right? It's a natural thing. We have an inner conflict. What other inner conflicts do you have? Let's get them all out. Are there any other judgments, any other reservations, any other inner conflicts? Let them all out because we're going to do a cool process in a second. What other ways do you feel conflicted about this? Because here's what's interesting is the way that we do anything is the, the way we do everything. And, and, and that's because we take ourselves everywhere. And so the truth is, is this conflict isn't just happening here. It'll be happening in relationships. It'll be happening in your business. It'll be happening everywhere. It'll be the same, the same thing. Part of me totally believes in it, whatever you've said, and then part of me sometimes really doubts it. Part of me doesn't have the confidence it's going to work out. Part of me, doesn't, like, the, the, because of circumstances I can't control. I want you to know, and I just want you to just see, see if it's okay to accept this for you, that out of all the things you could have chosen to write down, you've written down what you've written down, and that's interesting. And that's likely because that's a truth for you, not just, not just in one area, but that's likely a truth for you in many areas. That's the way that you do what I'm about to ask, and it's the last question. The last question, well, before I ask the question, it's true for all of you that you don't like to admit some of the stuff you've just written down. That's true for most of us. We don't like, I've pulled this out, but most of us don't really like walking around admitting what it is that we've just um, admitted. 
Oh, except for Jane, she thinks about it all the time. <laughs> so everyone but Jane, <laughs> which is fine. But that's, uh, Jane, that's gonna be your answer to the next question. And because here's the answer to the next, here's the next question. So the next question is, how have you resolved this? What actions and avoidance pattern do you go into to not feel this tension? Jane already told me the way that she resolves this tension is she just thinks about it all the time. Thinks about it, thinks about it, thinks about it. Because we don't want to sit in this tension. We don't want to think about these things. Do I deserve it or do I not? So what do we do to not have to be in this tension? How do we resolve it? Some of us, oh, just give up. We just, ah, it's never going to happen. Others go, well, I've got all these other things that are really busy. Others just think about it constantly. Some, some people just keep trying to make it happen. How do you put other people first? So I put everyone else first. How do you resolve this tension so you don't have to look at it? What is it that you're doing in your life that is a distraction to stop you moving through this? You give yourself excuses. Some people go to course after course after course when they just know truthfully there's, there's some action and stuff they need to handle. And so there's this way that we resolve this tension because in society we think tension is bad. I'm here, I wanna be here. And the reason, and I know what I need to do, I need to believe in myself more. But instead of just taking the, I'm gonna go believe myself more, we go to the beach and clean the house and go to this and do this and do this and do this and do this and think about, think about, think about all these other things, instead of just going, eh. Or some of us go, I better work on myself. So I'm here, I wanna be here. This is what I need to do but I won't take the action and said, I'm gonna look at myself as broken. I'm gonna go, there must be something wrong with me. And I'm gonna to go to this healer and this healing and do this thing and do Reiki and acupuncture. And I'm gonna do all these things. There must be something wrong with me. Cause that, that's how I resolve it. Instead of just taking the truthful action that we need to take, who's getting this? There's a truthful action for all of us that we need to take. I need to have the confidence. I need to believe in myself more. I need to do this. I just need to go out and do the shopping. I need to do something for me. I need to da 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 And we know this is what we're supposed to do. And then we fill our lives with this. Does this make sense? That's right. We don't. That's right, Maureen. You do all these other things. And it's really interesting. And it's really, really interesting to me. Who finds this really interesting? Because... Uh, I know what I did, and I'll just I'll just come in from a vulnerable place so that you guys know we're all on the same page. Is this is me? I want to have a hundred million dollar company. This is this is where I am. I know what I need to do. Focus on one company, the education company, the one that I love, the one that does everything, and go forward. What do I actually do? I start a digital marketing certification, another business here, another business here, gym. I buy hair salons. I invest here. I do all of these things instead of just doing the one thing that I know I want to do. And so my distraction pattern is I just keep creating all these other distractions that I have to look after so that I don't do the one thing that I'm supposed to do. Does this make sense? That was my pattern. That was my pattern. And it's so nice to see it. <laughs> it's so nice to go, okay, cool. That is my natural way of stopping myself from doing what it is that I know I need to do. And so we have these conflicts. Does this make sense to everybody? What would it be like to be somebody who was here, wanted to be here, and then knew the action and simply just believed in themselves and took the action and got there? What would that be like? What would it be like just to be someone who just manifested? They said, I want to have this. They went into it, said, oh, I need to do this. And they went, okay, cool. And then they just did it. That would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. So we're going to do a cool, uh, a cool process, and uh, I hope you guys all enjoy it. 
Uh, it's going to be obviously a closed eye process. You don't have to do uh, you don't have to do anything other than uh, other than be you and go through the process with me. You guys all excited about it? I hope so. So if you're ready, go ahead and close your eyes and take a few big, deep, relaxing breaths with me and just relax into your seat and oh, feels good to be relaxing, doesn't it? And just relax into your being, relax into yourself and set the intention to relax. And as you're relaxing, I'd like you to imagine Imagine that you're walking across a beautiful beach and you're barefoot. You can feel the sand between your toes. You can smell the salt water. It's absolutely beautiful. You can hear the, the waves crashing as you just stroll along this beautiful golden sandy beach. It's absolutely beautiful. You're the only one on the beach as you're slowly just strolling along, feeling really, really, really relaxed. And just allow yourself to experience the moment. You can hear birds chirping, the seas crashing, and it just is so relaxing. And as you're walking along the beach, you see up ahead of you, like a hole in the ground, kind of like a doorway. It's a, it's a super safe doorway. It sort of just has an opening and there's, there's stairs that go down and it's all safe and fun. And you just, you know that you're supposed to go down and deep inside. You just know that that's where you're supposed to go now. So you allow yourself to start walking down these stairs and, and with each step, it starts to get sort of darker and darker as you, is you know you walk down the stairs and, and if you follow me with my voice you're just going to get more and more relaxed as you just walk down the stairs all the way down and you just feel safe and you feel good good as you walk down and you know you kind of look behind you and the beach is disappearing far away in this little sort of hole it's like the end of a tunnel as you walk down and and, and as you walk down, you start to see the bottom of the stairs and, and at the bottom of the stairs, there's grass and it's beautiful and fun and spacious. And it's a little bit, it's a little bit mysterious as you walk down. There's a, there's enough light coming down from the, the top of the stairs where the hole was, where you walk through, there's enough light so you can see. And as you're walking down these stairs, you, you see that there's a few people uh, sitting down there and it feels safe. It feels good. They feel welcoming. They, they look like people, you know, you want to meet them. And it's like they're having a little bit of a picnic down there. So they're having a bit of a picnic. Like there's a, there's a blanket on the ground and you're just walking down feeling super relaxed and happy and comfortable. And, and there's a little, there's a little picnic happening at the bottom of the, the steps. And you know, you feel loved as you walk down and, you know, you feel as though you're supposed to join in on this picnic and you feel welcomed. And, and so you sit down, you know, on the, on the blanket as well. And, and as you, as you look around, it's really interesting because you, you notice that everybody, it's a little bit weird, but it feels okay, but it's a bit weird, but it, it feels nice. It feels like, it feels like home. You, you sit, you sit down on this, this blanket and you look around and, and the, the other people on this, on this blanket, they're actually you. They're different versions of you. And so you sit down on this blanket and you kind of look and it's a little bit weird. You wonder if it's a dream, but it just feels good. So you kind of just go with it. And, and as you notice, you look around at every single one of them that is sitting uh, down at this picnic are actually a, a different personality of yours and some of them don't really like each other as you as you sit down on the, the the blanket i want you just to ask yourself what are the personalities of this these people and you realize that this is like a truce this is a coming together this is a this is a meeting for everyone to make up and feel sorry because the truth is, is that they actually, all of these different versions of you in, uh, that are sitting here all want the best for you as a human being. They actually are all part of you. They only want one thing, which is 
the best for you. And so it's interesting, isn't it? You sit there and notice these different versions of you. And I want you just to float out of your body for a second and, and notice the different perceptions of the different versions of you that are, that are sitting on the blanket. There's the version of you that's confident, the, the doubting version of you. It's kind of like, you know, the seven dwarfs. And I just want you to spend some time just noticing who's there, noticing who's there. And I want you to ask yourself if there's any other parts, any other versions of you that need to be here. And just go around all the different, the different parts, even the ones that are looking shy and make sure they all feel good. That's it. That's it. Just make sure they all feel happy and safe to be there. You know, there's the, there's the inner child version of you there. There's the academic, there's the achiever, there's the sporty person. There's all sorts of musician. Maybe there's so much, the fun, loving, free spirit. They're all there. And as you're going around the different identities, you're going to stop at one. And this is the main identity, the one that's leading the meeting the one that's leading the meeting. And I'd like you to speak through this one. And I'd like you to say, I've called this meeting together today for all of us to come together and decide and to realize that we all want the same thing. The idea of this meeting is that we're all heard and that we all know and respect what each of you do, what each other part of us do. And as you say that, I want you to allow all the other parts to nod. And I want you to ask, do all parts, all parts of this personality, do all parts of the personality want what's best for the main personality? And I want you to see if they all nod. And if they don't, if there's one or two that say no or shake their head, I just want you to send them love and, and ask them to, to share why don't they feel like they want the same thing as the main personality and allow them to speak. That's it. Just allow all parts to speak. And I just want you to notice that they can all speak at the same time. Notice what it is that they say. And I want you to ask all the parts that are there. What is your purpose? What is your main objective or goal in life? And just connect to that for a minute. As you look at all their parts, all the parts of you, just ask, what is your main purpose in life? What are you there for? What is your goal? What is your job? And just go around and see the different perspectives from the different parts and just ask from that part, what is its goal? What is its job? What is it here for? I would like any disagreements to come out. If there's any parts that disagree, anything that needs to be said. And you'll know when it's time, it's time for them to hug or shake hands and to all agree to work together to achieve overall satisfaction for the main identity. And you'll know this because all the parts start this big group hug and the hug gets tighter and tighter and tighter until it all just becomes one again and all parts have integrated back into the whole. And as soon as that happens, you feel really good. You feel as though every part of you is heard and every part of you is spoken for. And now you get to create for all of them. You feel whole again. And so as you feel whole again, you step up off the mat, off the blanket, dust yourself off 
feeling so good. And you start walking back up those steps. And as you walk up those steps, I want you to reflect on all the different parts of you and all that they want. And I want to ask, what is your purpose? What is your goal? What are you really here for? Are you here to, to move towards what you want and achieve everything you desire? Or are you here to doubt? Are you here to be in denial of what you want? Are you here to just stay still? Or are you really here for expansion, for joy, for love, for fulfillment? What are you really here for? As you keep taking the steps up, you'll notice that you're here for a lot, you're here for fun, you're here for purpose, you're here for fulfillment, you're here for love, you're here for joy, you're here for giving back, you're here for making lots of money, doing great things. That's what you're here for, aren't you? And as you know that to be true, you take the final steps up the steps, all the way back up, right up, and you start to see the light really getting stronger as you come up and out of your deep darkness and you move up out to the beach, Take your foot up and stand back on the sand. When you're back on the sand, start walking back into this reality. And as you walk back into your body, you're here now. And you can open your eyes. You can come back into the magnetic mind class here on a Tuesday evening. And you can say hello. Welcome back, team. Welcome back. How do you all feel? How was that? Good. That was wonderful. Awesome. Might do that again. Cool. Great. Nice. You're not here to play a small game. You're not here to get distracted. You're here to have it all. You're here to believe. You're here to be you. And I'm so excited to let you know that's the truth. That's the truth and you've always known it. And it's time to bring all of you in alignment. Because you freaking rock. Awesome. Cool. Well, I really, really wanted to do this one uh, on the first one for the year because it's a big one. Uh, internal conflicts can be a can be a problem. It's a nice meditation to come back to a few times and uh, just get together and get connected. This week, I would love you to play from that place of of action. Christine says, I'm running a big workshop in May and I'm conflicted about if I can do it. You can. You can. And if it's your first one, doubt is normal. Doubt is normal. It's okay. It's not okay not to take the action. Does everybody get the difference there? It's okay to have a bit of doubt and still take action. What's not okay is to, you know, let the doubt take over. But, but understand this, everyone's a work in progress. And that's part of the human experience as we try to do things we've not done before. And part of doing things we haven't done before, we wonder if they're going to work out. <laughs> Which I hope is fair enough to say. And I think it's quite truthful, right? And, and sometimes we just got to realize we don't have to race around trying to heal that. This year, I want you to take the action that's necessary. And when you find yourself not taking the action, that is your warning sign that there is some work for you to be done. Does that make sense? 
the the warning sign that there is some work for you to do is when you're not taking the right action or when you're falling into that pattern that you just recognize what was your pattern overthinking trying to say that you need to work on yourself what was your pattern we'll do these questions again and you'll realize that you have a repeating pattern a repeating way to not take the action that you need to take because remember that there's two parts to manifestation there's the law of attraction feminine part the receiving part and then there's the action take action in spite of part and are both needed in order to create what you desire they're both needed